October 2008, Kerry Katona appeared on This Morning in an interview which caused us concern and was to mark the beginning of a two-year media frenzy. I mean, your speech is a bit slurred. That's probably because I have medication at night time. This is going to be made into a huge big publicity thing. Only because our phone has already gone in the gallery from people up in ITV yeah. who've said, is she OK? Fine, I've been happier, I swear to God. Just gonna here now welcome back thank you thank you for having me back it's uh, it's a pleasure it's a pleasure um, the, the difference between this interview and that interview in 2008 was that um, we had you arrived late we didn't have time to talk to you we didn't have time to see how you were you appeared on the sofa and we started to talk and thought this isn't right there's something not right here which is which is which were the words I used um, uh, this morning you've come in you've sat down we've had a chat you're with new management got you here on time <laughs> you look fantastic thank you um, and you're obviously a very very different person massively different. now I started that it well I mean we chatted about other things first before I got to the point in that interview where I said and the gal I could hear in my yeah. ear the gallery phone was ringing both Fern and I were very much aware that you were and as I said then you were a different person you weren't the person that we knew at that point you said no I'm not now what do you say that wasn't me back then I was in a very very dark dark place uh, I was on a lot of heavy medication I was in a very unhappy marriage and I was taking drugs um, I had not been drinking I had not taken any a class drugs that was purely down to bipolar medication mm. and I swear that on my children's life I was on 350 milligrams of clopromazine uh, which I took at quarter to twelve the night before so every morning my speech would, would be very slow and it wear off later on in the afternoon but yeah. watching that back makes me well up and have you watched the full interview no I'm too embarrassed and ashamed it's mortifying it's you know I was in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong people around me I've moved away I've I wasn't a good person then yeah. And it's hard to watch it back. It's hard to, oh my God, my kids are going to have to watch this when they grow up, and, you know. But when you see the clips, just those small snippets there, you can, can you understand why yes, Phil Fern would have asked those questions? Yeah, completely. You have to remember, I was in complete denial of my life at that point. Mm. I was in a wrong marriage with the wrong person. I'm not going to blame anybody else for my doings. Mm. I'll hold my hands up and take complete responsibility. Mm. Nobody forced me to do anything. But when you're in a marriage like that, or a relationship, or mm. you're surrounded by people, until you find that strength to get out of what you're in, there's not a lot you can do about do, it. Do, do, does it sort of affect your the, the bipolar medication that you were on at that time? Um, not, not just your speech. Did it affect your awareness or... Uh, your thought processes, your sort of memory. Luckily for this morning, I did watch a clip of it back. I didn't watch it all. I came off my bipolar medication because I actually said to my husband at the time, you know, this isn't right. I should not be talking. I felt suicidal on mm. it. And if it wasn't for this morning, I actually weaned myself off it without going to the doctors. We'll talk about coming off the medication because that doesn't work for everybody. No, I would not very... advise anybody unless they go to their own doctors. Yeah, you have to be very, very careful, careful because it's very, very dangerous, yeah. Do, do, you, do you think you should have been on that morning? Do you think you should have done the interview? Well, the thing was, uh, we, there was a crash on the way here, so we got late. So I was half asleep in the car, never spoke to Mark at that time, my makeup artist who I've known for 10 years and didn't even speak to her in the chair and she done my makeup so I was still half asleep. I know I shouldn't have done the interview but I'm glad, I'm glad I've, I have done because it's changed me as a person. That interview, the News of the World video, it's all changed me. It, it gave me a massive wake up call to go, come on Kerry, you're a mum. This was the, this was the video of you, of, of you yeah. allegedly, it says, I have to say allegedly yeah. but you know. You, yes, you... yes I was, I was. I'll hold my hands up. Sorting you know, cocaine. Yeah, and if I hadn't have 
don't know the things. I mean, the situations you're in, the people you're surrounded by, I had nobody to help me. I was brought mm. up with these kind These were my friends and family, um, most of them. And I had nobody to help me. I'd been made bankrupt, uh, I'd been dropped from Iceland. So it was kind of like spiralling out of control and I started taking more and more drugs. I was like asking my husband to help me, but he was not helping at all. Until I went to boot camp for two weeks at the beginning of January this year, I was clean for two weeks. I did not want to go home because exercise made me really think. It cleared my head and the medication because when you're diagnosed with bipolar and depression, all the doctors say go and get exercise. Mm. But you can't be bothered until you actually do it. And it cleared my mind. I thought, you know, I don't want to go home. When I watched um, on Sunday the Coming Clean um, program, I found it. I found it really tough to watch. So I don't know what it was like for you watching yeah. it back. I mean, you were very, very honest. Um, and there were some moments in particular when you just dropped off uh, Molly and Lily Sue at the airport and you came back and you said, for the first time, you felt like you were going to really, really miss them. Yeah. Because normally when you drop them off, you'd be thinking about... Taking uh, drugs. Taking drugs yeah. and getting off your head. And it's, I mean, it's, as a mother myself, it's very hard to, to hear you say that, but then I guess you've got to hit that rock bottom in order to, to, to move on. To climb back up. I mean, one of the reasons why I've been so open and honest is because I don't want anybody from my past to have anything on me anymore. You know, it was a lot of blackmailing and I couldn't get out of the situation I was in. Mm. But now that I've come clean, I've got it out there. You know, these people who live in houses and they're four brick walls who have money problems, their husbands are having an affair, or one of the kids have gotten to drugs, or, you know, but I've put it out there. Hopefully people can watch my show and go, I can relate to that. We're not all perfect. What about um, what about the money side of things? Because within your five-year relationship with Mark, um, it's been reported that £10 million has been spent, has gone somewhere, and you, you've said yourself that you don't know where, where this has gone. When I was on the medication, plus taking A-class drugs at the same time. When I stopped at all, it was like coming out of a coma. It was like, right, what's going on? Where's my money gone? And then it was a conflict of interest. Then Mark was controlling everything. He held the purse strings. And I wanted to know where it all gone. So when I came off from medication, it was like, right, where's my money gone? We started arguing. I wanted to find out where it all gone. And then Are I you knew any closer to finding out where it's gone? Are you pursuing that? Yeah, uh, we, there's a police investigation going on, but I'm not allowed to talk about it. Of course, it. no, we yeah. understand okay, that. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, the, uh, the, the relationship with Mark, you called for Mark when you were... Uh, I mean, one of my great regrets, actually, of that interview was that I should have got Mark in. I, I mean, I, yeah. I watched it back afterwards and thought, you know, you were calling for him. What I should have done was to have got him in and sat him down by the side of you. Then we could have seen the both of you together. Um, your relationship with Mark, we, uh, we saw on, uh, on, on, your, on your documentary that you were on the phone to him. You were very emotional uh, with him. What is your relationship with him now? I don't speak to Mark. As far as I'm concerned, he, I'm not blaming Mark for any of this. I hope he will take some kind of responsibility, but um, Mark is the daddy to my youngest babies, and that is as far as it goes, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, talking about your children, do they notice the difference in you, particularly the older girls, I imagine, Massive because work. they must be so aware, having lived with you in your home when you've locked the door for three that days? That is the one thing, though, that they, they've never seen me drunk. I've never been a big drinker anyway. The drugs, yeah, I'll hold my hands up to. They've never seen me take drugs. They've never... Good job they're at school now, because they haven't even watched my show. I mean, even though we're being filmed, they don't see the outcome of it all. Well, they're school friends, though. I hope not, because it was on quite late at night, mm. at 10 o'clock. But I'm always getting to that age now where I'm going to have to sit down. And I said to her on Sunday, well, Monday morning, I said, if anybody says anything to you in school today, come home and tell me and ask me, yeah. and I'll be honest and tell you. But she came home and said, no one said anything. Mm. Yeah. But uh, she's getting to that age now where I'm going to have to sit her down. What, she's very uh, what about coming, coming off the bipolar medication? Um, and, we, and we did warn uh, uh, at the beginning of this interview, and I'll say it again, that you must seek medical advice before you take such uh, a decision. Why do you, I mean, we, we could see that, that the effect that it was having on mm -hmm. you. Um, but, uh, but, but coming off it and the reaction to it, I would have thought, would have been terrifying. You know, what happens if it all comes back? Well. I went to see life coaches, Nick and Eva Speakman, who don't believe in any kind of medication. I went through quite a lot as a child myself and coped with it. And when a doctor diagnosed me with bipolar, took these tablets, 
you just take them, you know, a doctor's a doctor. And it was trial and error trying to find the right medication to suit me. Mm. And I was on 350 milligrams of clopromazine, 50 milligrams of Effexa, and 7 milligrams of Zopacol which is quite a lot. So in the morning, even when I used to film the Iceland adverts, we'd have to wait for later on in the day for my speech to catch up, catch up because it'd be very like the. And when I finally came off them, it was like, it was hard, but I knew I had to. And you haven't, you haven't had the, the peaks and troughs of, of, yeah. of bipolar. They do happen. Well, I won't say it was bipolar. I like to not think that I have it because I think everybody in life, you must get up in the morning, Holly, and think, don't feel like it today. Yes, you, you feel have bad down. days. You have a bad down, you don't feel very good. That's life in general, and I think it's just the way you cope with it. Mm. I've come to the conclusion where I'm just going to look it in the eye and tackle it. And rather You've... than taking tablets to mask it and making me worse, it's not worth it. Well, no, that's just for me, but anybody else, mm. please seek advice. You have, uh, you've been very uh, honest on the show, uh, uh, your documentary, and, and here today, we've, we've got the certificate of analysis. This is testing your hair. You can't hide what's in your hair because I've not got nits. <laughs> <laughs> your your hair, it's like the rings of a tree. It tells yeah. you exactly yeah. what is, which is why uh, some people uh, have cut all their hair off so yeah. that they can't be analysed um, because you can't hide what's in your hair. And we have the results here of you were tested for amphetamines, cocaine, opiates, ketamine, crack cocaine, zolpidem, methadone. And, uh, and all of those, 3.6 centimetres of, of uh, hair length, head hair, uh, um, all negative. This is a zero to 90 day history. So here, on paper, in front of you, in front of us, in front of everybody, is the fact that for, you are absolutely clean. And it goes further, 90 to 180 days is also negative. So Yay! well done, you. Yeah. <laughs> so you knew you knew you were, well, but I mean, know, this is proof. Yeah, that you are. but when I went to do the test, I was still so nervous, thinking, "Oh my God, no!" You know, like when you have a baby, you have to, you know, you have a HIV test yeah. you know, to make sure the baby's all right. Yeah. I had every, I had four of them just to make sure. And you yeah. think, "Oh, there might be a slight chance." What, what but I was so nervous, but I knew it was going to come back negative. I've never been addicted to drugs. It was leaving my husband that I found the hardest mm. because if I didn't leave. My husband, I would, I wouldn't have got off carried the drugs. on. So well. some people, you know, some people, uh, it's it's like they're like bad magnets, you know, that, that until yeah. you, until you get those apart, then nothing can be done. You yeah. have, you, it's very publicly, it was on, it was on documentary. You have new management being very very strict with you. You have new opportunities and new TV shows which we can't talk about and wouldn't even dream of talking about. Until <laughs> no maybe, idea what you're talking about, Philip. No, until late <laughs> until later on. But that's a lovely opportunity as yeah. well. Should that any of that be true? Um, <laughs> But how do you feel in your head now? I know I said this last time, but I could get upset just saying, I feel great. I really do. In your life? Yeah. So I really do. I'm happy. It's really happy. <laughs> you, you look, the I, the you ITV2 look show, now we've, we, we've, talked, we've talked, about, you know, talked a lot about the past, and what you're here to talk about is the future. And, uh, and that will all be on the next chapter. Starts tomorrow at nine on ITV2, followed by a TV crew. Are you all right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My eyeballs are watering. Well, um, that's the. Well, well, well done. It's hard for you to come back here. It today is, and I'm glad that I've so. built the bridges. So yeah. Thank you for having me well, back. Welcome back. back Thank you. Nice good to, to be you. back. Good. good. <laughs> Thank you. We'll be back after the break.